Hey, what's up everyone? It's your girl Brain Shanae and today is my stop for the Daughters of Jubilation book tour, which here is the book right here and is by Carolee Crothren. Um, so for this book tour that I'm part of, I'm going to be pretty much giving you my own reflections reflections of the book and also some of my favorite quotes quote of the book that I think I should acknowledge and bring up um, but this literally comes out today you guys so you should definitely pick up your copy right now but anywho, <laughs> I want to share with you my own reflections about the book first off this book left me crying in tears when when a lot of things were happening this is set in Jim Crow South the main character is Evie, which um, her, her, you know, that's her nickname. Her real name is Aveline and she is, lives in South Carolina. Um, and she has what she could, what they call jubing, um, which is jubilation. She has powers, um, which in this book, they do not consider themselves, do they do not consider themselves witches. They just consider themselves people that have powers um, and that those powers are pretty much is to protect them and people of their loved ones and just to protect people in general um, against people pretty much. Um, so literally I gave this book a five out of five stars. I would give it a thousand stars out of a thousand stars because it, it's an amazing book. Um, it brings up a lot of it gives you a perspective of in the South during this, you know, during that time period of Jim Crow. And um, majority of these quotes of, um, that I picked were very heart wrenching. I thought it also brings up certain things of black history that some people have aren't aware of or just have forgotten or just haven't thought of at all or spoken of. Um, but like I said, this book was excellent. Um, it gives me, it gave me perspective of, of things like just because you have powers does not, does not mean you're invis invincible. It does not mean that it does not come with sacrifices. Power, we have powers or sacrifices that are made if, if, even if you want it or not. Um, and I believe Evie definitely for sure realizes that power isn't everything. Just because you have powers doesn't guarantee that you'll save everyone, that your loved ones will be protected 100% of the time. Um, and I think that is one of the big lessons that Evie learns in this book as well. Because she thinks her powers are something that, wow, I can really do, I can create change, I can provide change. But in reality is, you can only do so much with your powers. Because in her family, the, um, in her family, the, the uh, excuse me, the women have it. They have these powers, which her younger sisters, Coraline and Doraline, they're twins. They will also have these powers when they reach a certain age. Um, her mother, she, she was a, she's a full blown Christian. She also has the power of jubilation, but she decided to suppress it and not use it due to certain um, instances and experiences that she had experienced with these powers. But she does, um, coincide and join forces with her grandmother who pretty much helps her and trains her on how to control her powers which her mother requested from her you know requested for her to learn from her grandmother who who she doesn't really talk to at the beginning um she's called grandma Addie which I adore her character she's really right up front she's a hundred with you she doesn't give you any type of crap she just tells you how it is and that's what I love about grandma Addie in this book um she reminded me so much of my grandmother because she was just right up front she was blunt she didn't have no filter at all um so I love grandma Addie but like I said grandma she, Evie was pretty much an apprentice to Grandma Addie and like I said she came to her grandmother to help her control her powers and to to hone them and to have the abilities to do things that she never could she she never knew she could do with her powers um but even in this book alone she is um pretty much threatened and stalked by um this I'll say predator because he pretty much is um his name is Virgil Hampton and he just comes back haunting her and then she doesn't know who she is but she but her mom tells her that she met, she's met him before and that she hates his guts and everything and what have you and then we come to find out why that is and what he had done to Evie which I do not want to spoil it for you. You have to read it. But it's definitely something that I, I expected when I read this book. I was like, who is Virgil Hampton? And then also with Virgil Hampton, he is one of the ancestors of um, a general of the Confederate Army. Um, so you have that too. So there is a lot of racism in this book as well that you will experience because it's the Jim Crow South. Um, but also in this book, Evie experiences seeing the future, um, which I want to bring that up with you. Um, let me see if I can find that because it was 
very interesting that she was able to see the future um, in her, she calls dream visions because they're a dream, but they're also a vision as well. Um, let me see if I can find the page because it was really, it was very cool that she had this vision, a dream vision be, and it brought back, and I had to think about the year um, of the vision that she had and you know the things that she had brought up like she brought up Popeyes and all that stuff and I'm like Popeyes I did they have Popeyes back then because I don't remember that so we have that so let me see if I can find this quote for you okay so here is the quote um or pretty much a passage I'll say because it's not really a quote but I guess you could in a way um it says um there was a girl um it, said, it mentions Lacombe Paris or Lacombe Paris which is a uh, you know, like uh, makeup and all that type of goodness. So it brings that up in her dream vision and then it brings up Popeyes. And then it says, there was a girl sitting on the grass below me and I'm certain she just scared 10 years off of my life. And then it says her shirt was purple with what looked like the words to a poem written on it, written on it in silver. Dream if you, dream if you can a courtyard, an ocean of violets in bloom. And just right off the bat, you should all know, or hopefully you know, that is the lyrics from When Doves Cry by Prince. And that was released um, 1984. But if you keep on reading, it says something like that, pretty. At the bottom of it said, rest in power. So if you think about rest in power, that's when Prince had passed away. And that was April the 21st of 2016. So if you think about it, she's seeing the year 2016. Like I thought about it and I'm like, what the heck? But yeah, so that's her dream vision. Like she's dreaming, but she's having a vision of the future and of this girl, which she finds out who this girl is, which I do not want to spoil it for you on who it is. You definitely got to pick up this copy to know, but literally it got, it got <laughs> like this book is amazing. Um, but anywho, like I said, I give this a five out of five stars. This is a great book. Also, Evie finds the person that she loves, um, who is Clayton or Clay for short. Um, but something at the end happens and it was very, it got to my heart because it made me think of, you know, if that happened to my husband, how would I feel? Like, you know, my emotions, what, what will be going on in my head, you know? So like literally this book was amazing. And uh, let me just read you some of the quotes that I that popped out of me that I liked. And this is by Grandma, uh, Grammy Addy, Grandma Addy. And it says, the hell it ain't, she argues, instantly snapping back to a scowl. We was trained to be all polite and de deferential with it, but that's a load of shit. Jube ain't polite. Jube ain't de deferential. Jube ain't a goddamn ice cream social. It's our survival, she bellows. The walls tremble. I bet they're afraid of her too, but mama doesn't back down. We don't need to rally on our magic to, su to survive no more, she argues. Pro progress is slow but times have changed and it says oh have they won't you go tell tell that to Mam mammy teals bet she could have used some magic and so pretty much this is her mom and her gra uh, grammy addy going at it saying that they don't have to use their powers anymore but then she mentions mammy Till, who is emmett till's mother and uh, she experiences you know when her emmett till died um of course, by racism, uh, people that are racist and everything like that. She, so that's why she said, oh, have they? Won't you go uh, tell that to Mammy Till? So, and when her mama said progress is, is slow, but times have changed, nothing has changed, which that's what was grandma, uh, Grammy Addie was pretty much saying to um, Evie's mom. So I wanted to bring that up. It says, and then I wrote, they don't consider themselves as uh, witches, like I told you. They consider themselves as people having the ability to protect themselves and others. Uh, which when she says jube, that is short for jubilation. That's what they consider uh, their powers, once again. If I don't know if I mentioned that or not, I probably did. Um, but then here is another quote that I liked. It says, I think, I think about the word destiny. I never cared for it. I hate the idea that our lives have been etched in stone someplace we can't touch or see. And we're all just players in a drama that already has an, an ending of, uh, unbeknownst to us. I believe I have the strength to take care of myself and the people I love. I will keep my eyes and my heart directed at them so that if destiny tries to harm any of them, it will have to go through me. So she's so this is Evie saying that she's determined. She's willing, willing to protect the people she loves and her loved ones with her jubilation and her powers. Um, but reality hits her too at some point in this book, like I said, which 
Literally, she learns powers don't guarantee protection for everyone or not even yourself. Um, so let me see. The next quote that I wanted to share with you, it says, we can't worry about all that. All we can do is have faith, love each other, and believe we'll make it work he declares and that's all we can do is make it work and love each other so we have you may not have power you may have powers you may not have powers but you have to make it work and you still know that you love each other that's the strong bond that you will have with your loved ones that you love each other so I wanted to bring that quote up and then it says on this one it says no matter what happens you gotta have faith that you will survive and you will become the whole person you're meant to be um which this is talking about destiny again and you know about the future because you don't know what the future holds and i think that's what evie also brings up when she sees the future when she thinks of the future of 2016 and everything like that um and so or just in the year 20 in the year 2000s alone and she doesn't know where her future lies and what is who she's going to be with or and all that so literally like i said i want to bring that up the whole person you're meant to be so you're going to be who you're meant to be you just can't be thriving on it and figuring out on your own time will come and it will happen um and then let's see i have so many more quotes i'm gonna do a few more yes so when i talked about uh, virgil hampton it's um it's the general woods so the general to which that means refers is Wade Hampton III. Virgil Hampton, why didn't I put it together before? They're related. His ancestor was a wealthy slaveholder, Confederate general, and early KKK financial backer, as well as famous South Carolinian. These are our celebrities. And then I wanted to stress this enough, this quote, we, all of us, just keep fighting the same battles and new eras with new faces each time. It's never ending until the world changes in an unfathomable way our kind of jubilation ain't never gonna die out which that that quote alone is true it says you know we're gonna keep fighting battles and new airs with new faces each time with racism um and you know it's never ending and it and it's 2020 right now and we're still having a new era and we're still fighting our way for for equality and i feel like that quote already brings it up of the struggles that we still have today you know and this is during jim crow you know this book the setting during jim crow south and it's 2020 and we're still dealing with this fight today so i have that quote that i wanted to bring up and then the next quote um which i think is more of a spell um, but I won't talk to I won't even think of this one because I want to talk about other ones. Um, but definitely, um, it was definitely a good quote that I marked down. And it says right here. <sighs> no, I'm not going to read this one because this is going to spoil you. But literally the themes of this book I want to announce is about love, family, it's about future, past, um, your history, sacrifice, tragedy, loss, racism, uh, regret, hatred, family curses. There's a lot of themes within this this book alone, and I think that's a it's a lot of lessons learned, a lot of lessons we have to think about for us alone, especially as a black person, and just being a person in general in this world. Um, so I wanted to bring up those themes that I really thought are something that are key points in this book. And then the next quote it says, "Jubilation comes from vengeance," um, which they feel sometimes. Uh, Evie, her ancestors who had jubilation, feel like it comes from vengeance. But but then at the end of this book, Evie realizes that jubilation isn't vengeance for her. It really isn't. And I wanted to bring up that quote. I have two more after this one. It says, "How can some place be your home if you can't be safe there? Why do we put up with it just because it's where we're born?" That ain't a good enough reason, not for what they do to us, which is another true, another true quote. How can we, how can someplace be your home and you're not, you, you don't feel safe? Or why do we put up with it? And this is bringing up racism. Why do we still pull up it? Why do we, this is America, right? Why do we still feel unsafe? And this is supposed to be our home. You know what I mean? Uh, so I wanted to bring that up too, because that is definitely a, a great quote. And then two more quotes that I have for you. It says, what I'm saying is we have the power to save lives and we do, but there are no guarantees. Sometimes it ain't going to happen. It ain't going to work out the way we want it to. And then another, the last one, it says, no magic is perfection, Evie. It's just another part of life. You will not win every battle. Any victory is a gift to be cherished. 
which like I said, just because you have powers and everything like that does not make you invincible. It does not guarantee that you're going to save everyone. And I, I love this book to my core. This book was amazing. I really really love this book like i said it's a lot of le lessons that you have to learn about love sacrifice um blessings um if you consider you know this a family curse or not some people might consider it family curse some people might not but like this book alone is amazing like i said it had me in tears i literally just finished this book and i'm sharing you my thoughts right as i'm done fin reading it because it's amazing. I I got really emotional because I think about my history of my family and what they had to go and what they went through during the Jim Crow era and everything like that. And it's really heartbreaking. I'm sorry. I'm I'm not trying to break down because this, like I said, this book is amazing. But I, it makes you think about history, um, you know, of America and and how, where and how it was built. It was built on stealing people's lands spreading diseases killing innocent people bringing people here um, as slaves and building buildings for an america and then we end up you know they end slavery so to speak but then they treat us like crap they treat us like animals they still feel like we do not belong here in america but pretty much you did bring us here so this is our home too you know you took us away from our homeland and the majority of us, as years have gone by, we have been born here on this soil. So this is our home too. Um, but like I said, this was a great book. I love Evie. I love Grammy Addie. I love Clay in this book. Um, it also brings up Anne Marie, Eva's, uh, Eve, Evie's, uh, Evie's best friend, who um, tells Evie that she likes girls. So I think that's also nice. It brings up a queer it has queer in it as well like a, you know and i love that too it's it's definitely diverse it, and i love Anne marie as especially sharing her thoughts and you know how she feels like she loves girls she likes girls she doesn't she's not really attracted to men and evie did not judge her not at all she thought about it like okay is that normal but then evie just said you know what Anne marie is my friend i'm gonna love her she's my best friend she's gonna i'm gonna support her and whatever she does and what she feels i'm gonna be with her and i'm gonna stand by her which that's another reason why i love evie but yes five out of five stars i love this book so so much um i hope you loved and enjoyed my little spiel i hope you enjoyed my stop of this amazing book tour um but yes please like i said definitely pick up a copy of this because this book is amazing but anyway, guys, like I said, I hope you enjoyed this video. You have a great day. See ya.